Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we have an emergency service call for an LG Multi-V unit. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a service call for an LG Multi-V unit. Apparently there was a service code, an error code of CH26 according to the engineer. This is the unit right here. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. All right, here's our unit. It's our main control panel. Inside here is our main board. Oh, wow. That's gone. Let's see. C11 compressor one, 261 error code. So if you put it in their program, it's gonna be the first two numbers, so 26. So CH26 is our error code all right so i plugged in this error code to the app it says the error title is outdoor unit inverter compressor start failure so it looks like something to do with the compressor and inverter board let's see cause of error the first start failure by outdoor unit inverter compressor abnormality the first start failure by outdoor unit inverter compressor abnormality hmm. through the app i click detail let's see it says inverter compressor starting failure main reasons compressor damage compressor wiring fault outdoor compressor pcb which is going to be the inverter board and then overload operation It'll be too much refrigerant clogged pipe the covering around the unit EEV -E defect but it looks like the main causes of this right now is we have an issue with the compressor starting so error CH26 we're gonna want to check that compressor and we're gonna want to check that inverter board and I just recently worked on this unit which is actually running right now which is great it had a CH29 error code we replaced the inverter board with the compressor and when we did that we had to do a couple more checks like the converter board and the main board so there's quite a few checks to get here let's see what's going on all right got the 261 error code just make sure we got our power coming in this should be three phase on 20 to ground 120 to ground 120 to ground and we should have two weight across each two weight two weight okay let's turn off the power here all right I turned it off you want to give this three to five minutes to be safe so everything actually de-energizes in here so let's give it five minutes all right so the inverter board is behind this plate we got four screws on each corner let's be careful not to lose those and what we're going to need to do is just take those off so we can get to the back i know it's pretty ridiculous so you have any slack i pull these three wires out Take those connections off so I can get to the back. So here's that board, but behind, this is your inverter board. This is your converter board. Definitely wanna do a check on both, but I'm gonna start with the inverter. I'm gonna do resistance first. So right here, this pink connector, we're gonna wanna take that one off first. All right so points four and five right here points four and five is ground six is five volt terminal seven is the 15 volt terminal so i'm going to check between ground and five volt which is five and six we should read above one kilo ohm then i'm going to check between ground and 15 volts which is between five and seven and we should read above 10 kilo ohms let's start with that first
I got 1,951 ohms. That is above one kilo ohm. 1,000 ohms is one kilo ohm. So that checks out. Now let's check between the 15 volt. I just changed my leads to the bigger ones and find it easier to get a get contact here. That's not looking good. You see it? It's going down. Look, we don't even have one kilo ohm. All right, according to this, we've got a bad board, but let's do a complete check. Let's check the IGBTM. We're gonna do a diode test. We're gonna put our black lead on P and then the red between U, V, and W. So P to U, P to V, P to W, and we should be reading 0.38 volts to 0.7. That's the range we want. This right here is your P, this is U, V, W, and this is your N. Got the field piece out, it's the only one that reads diodes so we're gonna put our black lead on P and then check see you got point four zero and then between P and then U point four zero and then the next one point four zero so we're in range between point three eight and point seven it's important which terminal you use next you want to put the red lead on N and then check UVW 0 0.40, 0 0.40, 0 0.40. The board checks out in that sense. Next, they want you to check the diode. You're gonna put your black lead on negative and positive lead on red, and you should be reading between 0.38 and 0.7. So, this is your negative. This is your positive. Short it out. Negative. Positive. Oh, look at that. 1.3 volts and it's climbing. So we went past 1.3 volts. I started over. It's supposed to be between 0 0.38 and 0 0.7 passing 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1 1.8. So this also doesn't check out OL, OL. So we're not in range for the diode. And we're not in range for resistance here. The next thing you would wanna do over here, between five and six, you would wanna read five volts while it's running DC. And then between ground and the next point, 15 volts, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna read 15 volts DC. You wanna make sure you're getting the proper voltage. But I can tell you right now, this board is bad. So you really wanna check the inverter board and compressor, but apparently this can give a feedback. So I remember in the last call with the 29 error code, they want us to check the diode on here. So here's P and N, positive, negative, and then R, S, T. We don't want to do a diode test on this as well. All right, so this is for the bridge diode. We're gonna put our black lead from the meter on P and then check RST. We should be reading 0.38 to 0.7 volts, just like the other board. Let's put the black on positive and check between RST. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that checks out. Next, we're gonna put the red on N and check RST. We should get the same reading. 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, that's good. We could also do a resistance check on this wire here. This one right there with the white cable, all right? Get this clip off. 
and we're gonna do a resistance check again between the 5 volt and ground and then 15 volt and ground. So terminal 9 is ground, terminal 10 is the 5 volt, terminal 11 is the 15 volt. So between ground and 5 volt, which is terminals 9 and 10, we should have above 1 kilo ohm and then between ground and 15 volts which is terminals 9 and 11 we should have above 10 kilo ohms all right between 9 and 10 Let's see where the meter average is out We're at 7 kilo ohms right now. We've got 6.8. So we're above the 1 kilo ohm reading. Okay, let's check between 9 and 11 now. Readings is just constantly going up. It said he wanted above 10 kilo ohms. That checks out. So the converter board right now is, to me, is looking good. We've got a bad invert inverter board and you can see all around here i'm gonna take a picture of it got a bunch of dark markings that could be uh overheating that right behind here is the heat sink so this could have over easily overheated all right you gotta wonder why are these things going bad you want to have solid connections, nothing loose. They also want to make sure you got no loose connections. All right, let's put this back. They also want you to make sure that you're not malfunctioning and you're getting the correct voltages out of these. There's also a step-by-step -step sheet I have as well. I'm going to include that in this video for everybody to see. Just put that all back. It's already nighttime out here. It's nice that they have a light. Oh, looks like we're getting a little bit of rain. Let's check this compressor quickly and get out of here. We got a bad inverter board. There's a good chance the compressor is bad. So it's behind this jacket, which seems to be crumbling. This whole thing crumbled apart and it looks a little oily over there. See those three wires? We're going to take them off and isolate the compressor and do a test. Alright, so I have a separate video on how to use a mega meter, but I got one lead on there and the other lead on the casing of the motor. I know you guys don't like this subco meter, but see that red marking right there? How it starts off so low? That's a bad reading. I don't like that. Man. Looks like we got another back compressor. You want to get a green light on there, but preferably you you don't even want to read uh, below a thousand mega ohms. So you shouldn't even start anywhere on this scale. That, from my experience using this meter and these kind of units, this compressor should be changed. Also, we got a bad inverter board. I literally just did this job literally a week ago or so on the other unit why are these units going bad but one good news is that the machine is working that i replaced the compressor and inverter board but it looks like we got another bad one it's pretty much the same reading on each leg to the casing of the motor with this mega meter i appreciate the guy's advice who gave me last time i'm gonna go with a meter that actually reads mega ohms i'm thinking about the klein et60 or 600 something like that i think that was the one I was looking at it looks like really good so whoever recommended that appreciate you probably gonna get that since it looks like we're gonna be getting a bunch of calls for this area there's quite a few units up here and it is a cold cold night in New York City we're gonna wrap this one up here we got a bad compressor and a bad inverter board oh boy here we go again we're gonna go for round two with this one Let's close it up. Maybe there's a couple of checks you might want to do is, like I said, check this board. We'll do the resistance test while everything is off. And then as far as 
system has to be running to do the other checks but as far as this i'm going to end it here back compressor bad inverter board we'll be back bringing this compressor up is going to be a pain got to go th from down there all the way around oh boy if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time